says, if we do not have the doctrine of Christ, we are none of his and we do not have the father. But he says, if we have the doctrine of Christ, we have the father and the son. Now, I have shared with you that in the beginning, God rested. Isaiah 66 is crazy. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Please understand that. Heaven and earth was co-created at the same time. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. Heaven is where authority comes from. Earth is where it's exerted. So every heaven and earth there is forms a world. In Genesis 2 verse 4, he says, the six days are the generations of the heavens. And we'll see there are three heavens made. The first one is in the beginning. Then it was with the division of the water. And then it was when the sun was made. So every heaven combined with the earth forms a world. Now, Second Peter tells us about these heavens. The first one before the flood was destroyed. He says, but the second heaven that is now is reserved for fire. And this heaven is a heaven that was the rulers of this heaven was the sun and the moon and the stars, which Joseph had a dream of, which is uh, started in Abraham when he says, in your seed after you and your seed in your generations. So the end of this second heaven is fire. And he says it's preserved for fire. And we know 70 AD, this whole thing burned down and Judaism is no more because it was a schoolmaster to Christ, but they rejected the Christ, crucified the Christ. So they literally put him through the fire and now they take the fire. So that deals with water and fire and the church is a world. Christ is on the throne at the right hand. He's not a closed book anymore. And heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool and he's waiting for the lost enemy to be under our feet because we are now co-seated with Christ. So here he says, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. And then he comes and he asks, where is the house that you will build for me? And where is the place of my rest? He's actually saying, my rest is disturbed and I want my house where I am to rest. Matthew 16. Jesus took them to Caesarea Philippi, which is like 60 kilometers out of his place of ministry. And he stood there in front of one of the biggest temples and he said to them, whom do the men say I am? And they said, well, you're John. Some says Elijah, some says Jeremiah. But then he turns around to Simon and says, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of of the living God. He's like, ha, ah, I see the doctrine of Christ. And Jesus answered and said, Blessed thou art Simon, poor Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. When he says, my Father, and in John 14, he says, I'm going to go prepare a place that you can be where I am. Remember when Jesus appeared to Mary after he descended and he preached and he said open the gates of hell and he emptied that place he came back and he appeared to Mary and he says don't touch me I have not been to my father and your father <laughs> he has already stepped into emptying the grave <laughs> abolished death and he now calls us our father oh you know, when Jesus taught them how to pray, he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, he already projected that he's going to prepare this place. Now he said, yeah, you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates are not going to stand for the church because Jesus says in Revelation, I've got the keys of death and hell. <laughs> I love this. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you will bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you will lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Why? Heaven has now become a realm on earth. So it's right here. It's not that we have to go somewhere or push through. It's that we have to believe and understand and have our minds 
change. Now he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. When Moses said, show me your glory, he said, there's a place beside me on the rock. This rock is the rock that was cut loose, that hit the statue of the kingdoms of the world in Daniel, and they become shelf. And this rock became a high mountain <laughs> that filled the earth, which is nothing than the Armageddon. He says, you're a city set on a hill because of that mountain we have oh come on guys we need to understand the volume of the book do you see that you cannot read it like separate revelations you've got to get the volume of the book to understand the purposes of God um there's a guy in America he calls me mama volume oh my word I've never been called that but I take it <laughs> I really take it so Jesus also is the rock that followed them 1 Corinthians 10 but he became the stone of stumbling, the rock of offense. But for those that believe, he becomes the cornerstone of what? Of the house that is being builded. Now, Jesus was, when he came, he said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, he could have just, just as well said to them, I have fulfilled the law. And he did say it. I did not annul the law. I fulfilled the law. But they kept on hitting him with the law because the law came by, by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The truth is the rest is now not in heaven. It came to earth. When he said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath, he says, I have come to bring you rest. Everyone that's weary and heavy laden, come to me. Then he says, labor to enter this rest. What is this labor? This is understanding and believing who you are instead of just suffering out there for a short-term appetite that's not going to take you anywhere. It literally destroys a lifelong gift that you can just enter into. Do I say stop working? No, I say get your mind fixed and focused because Jesus never told Martha that she must stop cooking. I mean, after he raised Lazarus from the dead, John 12, they were, they, Jesus went to them before he went for the crucifixion and the last Passover. You know what? Martha was feeding him and Mary was sitting at his feet, but Martha was not like, nobody's helping me. Listen, if you're called to do something, just do it. Smiling, not grudgingly. <laughs> Doesn't he say God loves a cheerful giver? So whatever you do for God, understand the purpose that you are doing. This is why he says nothing ever done for God is in vain, but it's the way you do it. <laughs> he also came and he said, the son of man can forgive sins. And this freaked out the Pharisees because they were sitting with the doctrine of Moses. But Jesus was having <laughs> the doctrine of Christ. He's preaching the doctrine of God, the doctrine of the Father and the Son together. Now, if we go back to Isaiah 66, and he says, where is the house that you will build for me? Where is the place of my rest? Whoa, so God is looking for a resting place because man disturbs God's rest. Now look at this. For all things my hands have made and all things have been, saith the Lord, but to this man <laughs> will I look to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. That just means a humble spirit. It doesn't say you must have holes in your clothes and who trembles at my word. Guys, please, the Spirit will not lead you where the word does not sustain you. Everything you need is in this book. Yeah, but Annalise, these books are compiled by men. Well, I trust God's Spirit to work in men to compile the book because he says, God's Spirit enthused men to write the book. And I believe the same Spirit that enthused people to write the book, enthused people to combine the Scriptures. So everything in this book is, is let the Word become alive in you. What is that? 
the doctrine of Christ. Because if that happens, it's the Father and the Son <laughs> coming alive in you. <laughs> oh, this is so awesome. So if we go to Hebrews 3, he talks about Moses. Um, maybe, maybe I must just read it. Verse 5, and Moses was faithful in the house that he built. But what was his house? Did Moses build the house? No. He says the law was a shadow of the good things to come. It was just a shadow of the real. It was a shadow of death. It was darkness. It was just a pattern. It was a shadow of the heavenly things because heaven and earth were separate. It was a shadow of the good things to come <laughs> because heaven is coming to earth. He says, as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken after. But Christ is the son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast to the confidence and rejoicing of the hope to the end. Moses was building the shadow. <laughs> okay. Moses had the plans. Christ is doing the work and he is the head of this body. And he says, we are all built together as living stones into this glorious house. <laughs> Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost say, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. This is the minute you become. Now, we know that Jesus was the stone of stumbling because the plans, they, they stumbled over Christ, but it didn't stop him from building his house. We are the building of God. And Ephesians 2 says, Now, therefore, you are no more strangers, foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. <laughs> you are part of the household. You are built up together as a glorious place in God. <laughs> I mean, what, what more can I say? So the work on earth is not finished. The minute you get saved, it's not the end. It's but the beginning because the house on earth is still being built. In Ephesians 4, he says, God gave gifts for his intention was that we come to the full stature of the full measure of the fullness of the Christ. So what is that but the complete house? Because he is the head and we are built together. We are just a part of this awesome, awesome work. But the final result will be a completeness going back into the rest. <laughs> when God says, where is my rest? His rest will be when this house that is now being built comes to its completion. Oh, but Annalise, what is happening to the world? It's got nothing to do with me. But we are still in the world. Yeah, but we're not from the world. We're in the world. We are the light of the world. So it's not for us to run around and, uh, oh, look at this, look at that, what's going to happen to us? It has already happened to us. We are born again. We are in that place that He has prepared for us. The problem is, because we're still alive on the earth and we are married and we're having children and we've got to do all these things, that we lose track of the purposes of what God really has for us. So it really is being so nicely explained in 2 Corinthians 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, now he's speaking about this earthly house as a tent, but we are busy building a spiritual house and we're part of the household of God while we're living in a tent. And this is where the confusion comes in. You cannot mix the old and the new. The Bible says, Jesus actually himself said, if you, if you take the new to fix the old, you're going to tear both. Now look at it. He says, now if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. This is why people like Paul and Peter said, I've run my race. I've kept my faith. 
He says, there are these faith heroes, but they without us cannot be perfected. He says, we've come to the spirits of the just made perfect, but the house is not completed without us. He says, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Now, if you just read this verse, it says like, please, can I just die and go? Let the rapture be. The rapture is, is not real. It's not, the Bible doesn't talk about rapture. It talks about caught up. He says, it looks like we just want to go. But verse 3 says, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Now, if you get stuck into all the natural uh, disasters and what they're doing to the earth and uh, Annalise, must we not look at it? No, you must look at it, but know that you carry the answer. It's not for you to succumb to the problem. You are the answer to the earth because the earth is waiting for you. I really believe that God is going to give Christians plans to bring everything back because this is what the Bible says. The earth is groaning, waiting. <laughs> for we that are in this tabernacle, we do groan being burdened, not that we'd be unclothed, but be clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up by life. <laughs> Jesus came. I am the Lord of the Sabbath. He swallowed up the law and he is the rest. Now, if we step into that, then death will be swallowed up by life. 1 Corinthians 15, here he says, mortality will be swallowed up. Now, mortality means you're not going to die. You just be changed. He says, behold, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all die but we shall all be changed. What's that? The house is finished and God is resting. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who hath also given us the earnest of the Spirit. God purposed it, the Son manifested, and the Spirit works in us to bring us to this place of rest. This is the place that God is yearning for. And he's not going to rest till he finds his place of rest. Amen.